Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. I just wanted to make another video here on the um, 4000 watt psycho crack side of the room in the Aeroflow unit. Um, it's gotten quite a bit bigger since the last time you've seen it. There's the first layer chalice and the second layer. I was not expecting it to stretch so far. I kind of made a mistake most likely vegging this one out for I think this only had two and a half weeks of veg time. May have had three though, I'm not sure, but um, to give you an idea how tall this room is, I am reaching up as far as I can on these hoods and the ceiling is at 10 feet and I'm not that far away from the hoods being all the way up there. And, um, that's how big the, how tall everything is. But it's looking really good. This is um, just going into the third week of flower, and um, it's um, you know developing pretty nicely as far as you know down inside. You know the um, the little scragglies. I tried to lollipop it the best I could, but you know it gets um, it can definitely stretch. So then I got a whole bunch more stuff, and with two layers of trellis, I can't get into the center of it. But as far as the Aeroflow versus the Ebon Grow system, you know, nobody asked me to make a video about this. I just kind of wanted to go over something real quick. Um, first of all, this system only uses three inch net cups. It uses a 15 gallon reservoir. So the water chiller is much more efficient. Um, on top of that, these plants really didn't need to get this tall for whatever reason they just decided to continue to grow no matter what I tried you know um, but next time you know I'll try something different I guess but so the system itself is more efficient most important thing here is, is what is the yield difference between this system and the ebb and grow system first of all this has, um, before we get into the yield though, this has the three tubes. As you can see, I don't put any plants in the first three. The very first three are access holes down to the ports. The next three up are where, where actual net cups go. I never put anything in there because it's just too close to the reservoir. So right there, so these three plants are really kind of scrunched up. And then the further back you go, the more spread out they get. So if I could make this system better, I would make this reservoir a little bit wider and shorter to the ground. That way they're evenly spread out so that they're not uh, scrunched up. Now I know the system was designed for things like strawberries and lettuce that don't grow tall, uh, but technically, you know, it is nice to, if something like this happens, that you have that option. Now, I just did the Blue Dream crop out of this and I got five pounds under four lights, a little over five pounds. Now I have the same amount of plants going underneath the same exact amount of lights um, in an ebb and grow system on the other side uh, of this building that's separated into two parts. And I'm not really so certain there's gonna be that big of a yield difference. I honestly think that it's gonna be really close to about exactly the same of what this system just gave me in the Blue Dream, given the same nutrients, same light, same humidity, ventilation, the whole nine, everything is absolutely the same. So, um, I mean, if there's a seven pound crop off 15 plants and four lights, I'll stick with the Ebb and Grow. But the Ebb and Grow also takes 300 milliliters plus uh, of part A and part B and about 80 to 100 milliliters of every additive to get it to the proper PPMs. This system right here, it takes three ounces of part A and three ounces of part B and like three quarters of an ounce of each additive. You know, so you're talking like 120 milliliters of part A and part B and then 30, less than 30 milliliters, like 25 milliliters of um, each additive. So it's just way more cost efficient so I mean if I'm only going to get a half pound more out of an ebb and grow system I'm definitely not going to stick with it because that is not enough yield difference to make up for the price and nutrients and the reservoir change are a nightmare and the amount of problems I have in the ebb and grow system is a nightmare too this system is pretty much run free now that I've dialed it in I really don't want to give up on an ebb and grow system because given the right amount of space on 15 plants, I'm sure that I could pull the right yield. Um, but I just thought in my mind, three and a half gallon buckets versus three inch net cups and some skinny tubes, those roots are gonna be able to get bigger. So an ebb and grow system must be able to produce more yield. Uh, but I'm not really so certain I'm gonna see those numbers. So 
especially with what I just seen in my big 12,000 watt room on the Psycho Crack. You know, 12 lights and only um, you know less than 10 pounds. That that was um, not what I was expecting. So you know, it just seems to me that building my own custom style uh, nutrient film technique NFT system. Uh, would probably be more cost efficient and way more productive than um, an Evan Gross system, but you know, that's that's just my my say my my view on it and what I'm seeing in the system. So you know, this system's a lot easier to control the diseases with too. Uh, you know, last year I had root aphids last summer, and it was a lot more easier to get rid of them or control them. Sorry, I never actually got rid of them last summer until winter came around and I was able to completely destroy everything by just getting everything out, cleaning it, disinfecting it, and getting them cool temperatures where the aphids just kind of go into hibernation. Um, and hopefully they never come back now that I've done all the work on the room to get it all barriered and all the vapor barrier and all the pest control I've been doing. So I'm hoping that I never have a reoccurrence of that crazy uh, summer again. That was a nightmare. Root aphids suck. If you ever have them, um, good luck and God bless because they suck so um, but anyhow I'm gonna get off of here I just wanted to uh, I hope that helps really honestly if I would have had a review like this when I was deciding whether or not Aeroflow or Evan grow um, I mean I would I would have definitely um, paid a lot of attention to it and probably gone straight with Aeroflow because um, but I will let you guys know the exact numbers uh, gram for gram versus 15 plants in Aeroflow and 15 plants in Evan Grow. Same stream, same light, same water temperature, same everything. So, anyways, YouTube, you guys have a good night and I will talk to you soon. Enjoy.